The Bahamas in North America is one of the most popular tourist spots in the world. However, as beautiful as the place is, one should be wary of the sharks roaming in the waters. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying story of Jordan Lindsay, who was snorkeling with her family on Rose Island when a group of sharks attacked her. Welcome to Final Affliction. This Wednesday marked the third day of their vacation in the Bahamas. Like many tourists, they had always dreamed of visiting the island country. Unlike most places in the world, the Bahamas wasn't falsely represented by the media and movies. It was, if not more, as stunning and exciting as they said. Jordan and her family woke up to the sunrise, eager to start the day. After all, this was only their third day and they had so many things to do. Jordan had breakfast with her family and shared stories with them as they sat together at the table. It was a fun time surrounded by the beautiful sandy beaches in the Bahamas and accompanied by her family and her girlfriend. What more could a 21-year-old girl from Torrance, California ask for? Back home, Jordan was studying communications at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. Her girlfriend Gianna was also studying communications. At around 12 p.m., the family had just finished their activities and were about to end the day relaxing and enjoying the scenery. However, that would soon change. Spotting the Sandy Toes Tour Company, the family decided to take a last-minute day trip to Rose Island. The six-hour excursion involved a boat cruise, a snorkeling experience, and a private beach where you could pet swimming pigs. Jordan was ecstatic about the idea. She had always been an admirer of nature and deeply loved animals. Snorkeling and petting pigs in the Bahamas was music to her ears. Although the trip was already full for the day, Michael, Jordan's father, managed to convince the company to have them on board for the excursion. The company snuck them on. Excited at the deal, the family headed towards Paradise Island Ferry Terminal, ready to board the ferry that would take them to Rose Island. It was a tragic mistake. As the energetic family boarded the ferry, they beamed their smiles at each other, unaware of what was about to happen. Nobody could have predicted that this small day trip would change their lives forever. The small ferry was docked, floating atop the rich turquoise waters beneath it. Although it was in the middle of summer, the sun decided to hide effectively today behind the gray clouds looming over the ocean. Still, the waters were just as beautiful with the dimmer sunshine it was working with. Eventually, the family followed the guide to prepare for their snorkeling excursion. However, Michael, the two brothers, Jordan's sister, and Gianna did not want to go through with the snorkeling. They just wanted to spend the rest of the afternoon lightly swimming by the beachside, enjoying the scenic views of the ocean. Jordan and Cami, on the other hand, wanted the full experience. It was the third day of their trip, after all, and Jordan wanted to make the most of it. The family talked it over and decided they would just part for a while. Later, Jordan and Cami would rendezvous with Michael and the rest by the beachside. Since the distance to the other side where the snorkeling spot was not so far, separating from one another seemed like a good idea at the time. However, it was a decision that everyone would later regret. As the two groups parted ways, Michael kissed Jordan on the forehead and told her, I'll see you later, Jordan. Jordan waved her hand as she walked with Cami towards the other part of the beach. The rest of the members left by the beachside waved her goodbye. Unbeknownst to them, this would be the last time they would see Jordan alive. Jordan and Cami walked up to the guide and followed the trail. The snorkeling spot was not too far, but walking towards it was a great time for reflection. Along the way, there were green vegetation and exotic birds such as peacocks in the area. The trail was sparsely placed with benches, locker rooms, and bathrooms for the tourists. The narrow trail was surrounded by all kinds of trees growing through the sandy soil. Cammie and Jordan spoke about life, her school, and her family as they calmly walked alongside the other tourists. The bright 21-year-old had many aspirations and a great future ahead of her. Eventually, they reached the snorkeling spot. Donning their wetsuits, Jordan and Cammie prepared for the fun experience. Jordan was particularly excited to see the underwater critters meandering around in the area. It was time to go. Jordan headed towards the deeper part of the water, admiring nature through her goggles. It was great timing as the sunlight began to show itself again, illuminating the beautiful structures of coral reefs under the water. Cami had also gotten in the water and was thoroughly enjoying her underwater exploration. However, as the two enjoyed their experience, death reared its ugly head. 
As Jordan continued looking through the water, Cami broke through the surface. Suddenly, she heard Jordan yell, Mom! She turned her head and saw something strange. At first, she thought it was a school of dolphins surrounding Jordan and that Jordan wanted to show it to her. However, as she looked more intently, an ominous feeling enveloped her. It was a feeling no mother ever wanted to feel. A school of sharks had approached Jordan out of nowhere. Immediately, Cammie's motherly instincts kicked in. She shouted at Jordan from a distance, telling her to swim towards her. However, it was futile. Without warning, the school of sharks pounced on her, biting her everywhere. Jordan fought hard, but there was already blood in the water, and the sharks had become frenzied. Jordan let loose blood-curdling screams, prompting Cammy to approach her. She screamed at Jordan once more, asking her to swim towards her. However, Jordan could not swim anymore. Cammy noticed her right arm had been bitten off by the shark. Horrified at the sight, Cammy immediately sprang into action, swimming towards Jordan despite the risk of getting attacked herself. Naturally, she was fearful of swimming into the chaos, but she didn't care. The fear of losing her child overtook any instinct to run and call for help. It was simply something any loving mother would have done. Cammy reached Jordan and fought off the sharks, punching the beasts in the nose and hitting them with everything she had. As she pulled on Jordan, the young girl told Cammy, Mom, there's another shark coming. The shark sped towards them like a freight train. It bit off another chunk of her lower leg. Jordan was bleeding profusely. Cammy never gave up. She hauled Jordan toward a nearby rock and called for help. Eventually, a boat from the Sandy Toes snorkeling tour rushed to her aid. Michael and the other family members were petting pigs by the beachside when they heard of a teenager attacked by sharks in the snorkeling area. After waiting a few minutes, Jordan was taken by an ambulance to a hospital in Nassau. However, upon arrival, she was pronounced dead. When Michael and the rest arrived at the hospital, they were too late. Jordan had succumbed to her injuries. In the subsequent months following her death, the family criticized the company for not having any protocols when it came to shark attacks. When the incident happened, not one staff or a boat was present to whisk away the sharks. Additionally, when Jordan was bleeding on a nearby island, barely clinging to life, the boat that would take her to the hospital arrived with no medical supplies. According to Michael, they did not even have first aid. The Lindsays called for better responses in the future to avoid the terrible fate their daughter experienced. Sadly, according to Michael, in his most recent interviews, Cammie is still too traumatized from the incident, especially because she was present and she witnessed firsthand her daughter resting in her arms while slowly succumbing to her final affliction.